right, so book review this time. Um, a while back, I did a video review of Demon City Shinjuku, the anime that was one of my formative experiences when it comes to me getting into anime and my Andy's Chucky, to borrow a expression uh, from Hirobaka. Well, one of my Andy's Chucky, along with Lotus War. And, well, Demon City Shinjuku was based on a novel, one by Hideyuki Kukichi, the creator, as we are best known here in the West, of Vampire Hunter D. Um, also did Wicked City, um, and a ton of other things. He's a very prolific writer. Um, so, well, the novel is available in English. And so for a while, it was on my reading list, list of things that I, I want to read this book. I want to see what the book is in comparison to the anime. Um, particularly since I've heard that the book is more in depth in a lot of respects than the anime is I'm like, okay, particularly from actually the ultimate fan guide that for Demon City Shinjuku that Guardians of Order put out after first edition, Big Eyes, Small, Out, Small Mouth came out or second edition revised came out. And they went into it a little bit there, but not super in depth. So I'm like, okay, there's more here. This is a theoretically gameable setting. So I decided to finally get around and read it. And so it is a, before I get too far into this, it is available as a omnibus digitally um, with the sequel um, Demon Palace Babylon or Demon Castle Babylon, depending on who you ask. And links to where you can get it digitally will be in the doobly doo with a, affiliate links are available. I am just going to be covering the Demon Station Chuku part. I will address Demon Palace Babylon later in a subsequent video once I finish reading that portion. Uh, that portion of the omnibus. But for here, I'm focusing on Demon Sage Shinjuku. Long story short, if you have only read, or only watched, I should say, Demon City Shinjuku, which admittedly, the majority of people in the U.S. who would have been exposed to it would have, because the work is, that's the work that is most well known. It aired on the Sci-Fi channel. Um, it has been in print in the West far longer than the novel has been in terms of accessibility. Is so I complete. So if your only knowledge of the anime, perfectly fine. Um, there is a lot more here in the novel than there is in the in the. A lot and I understand why the decision is made um, like the plot is effectively the same in like the broad smoke broad strokes uh, sorcerer Rebi Ra attempted to summon a eldritch abomination dark god of cosmic horror that is otherwise unnamed in Shin Tokyo caused the Tokyo quake that only impacted Shinjuku Ward, um, but left the rest of Tokyo and even the rest of the world otherwise unaffected. And since then, uh, Shinjuku Ward has been cut off outside of certain causeways and bridges and that sort of thing from the rest of the world. And all sorts of weird crap is happening inside of it, hence the name of what's the work gets the title of uh, Demon City Shinjuku. And up to several years later, where Grubby Ra has a spell cast on the president of the World Federation, uh, who has like chosen one who has been able to bring about world peace, all sorts of other stuff, wonderful things. And Grubby Ra is seeking to claim his soul, kill him as a sacrifice to his dark god to finally bring him into this world once and for all. I mean, it's that that's the broad strokes. That part is the same. Where things change is in the particulars, is in the nitty gritty of the book. 
and in a lot of respects, like if I was going to do this and structure this in uh, the same way as um, adapt as um, as like a book to movie adaptation sort of thing that that um, Cinefix and others have done. Uh, then it would be very heavily weighted on the what they changed part, the point where it almost would be a total nuts and bolts uh, from scratch recap of just covering uh, what's in the book. Because the broad strokes are absolutely, like, in terms of the core premise is the same. Um, Rebbe Ra um, attempting to seek the soul of this holy person who is basically a new messiah who will save the world or is in the process of saving the world um the son of a chosen of the the past warrior who was a peer of Rebbe Ra and tried to stop him in the past is sent in to demon station juku to fight him um he is accompanied by the daughter of the president of of the world president who is also going on her own accord because she wants to make sure her father is safe and help save his life um in spite of the male leads attempts to get get her to leave because um in some ways she's a liability not because of her lack of skill but because of her being there plays into the villain's plans um, but ultimately she proves herself an asset because of her own spiritual strengths that the protagonist lacks Though she in turn has her own lack of experience on the seedier side that uh, our protagonist with his street smarts and so forth and so on is general savvy and cunning is able to avoid like all the, like all those bits two works have in common way the ways they articulate is tremendously different um probably like the biggest thing the biggest difference of all is in the novel, the actual demon city Shinjuku feels like a city. We spend about a week of time in the city going to hunt down where um, Rebi Ra's base of operations is, beat him once and for all. And that is, and during that time, like we, you get to know the city and you get this real strong sense that the titular demon city Shijuku is a living, breathing place. It is a city. It not just, it isn't the ruins of a city uh, inhabited by monsters and creatures and that sort of thing. It's not a giant dungeon crawl the way that it is in anime, the way it's done in the anime. Like we, we encounter a few people here and there we encounter the guys at the little um, Izakaya who try to um, kidnap Siaka and do and nasty stuff. Uh, it's debate like it is like questionable in the scene in context whether or not like it could be sexual assault. It could be selling her off to slavery. Could be both. It is co couched in a way where it, either one is possible. There's a little bit of that in the work. Um, the kid, uh, Chibi, is like sort of here, but also sort of not. He is a significant role, like, but he is not the sole form of people who don't suck in uh, Shinjuku. The information, uh, him and Mephisto, like the information broker, like, doesn't show up at all. Um, but instead, they are replaced by just a wide array of all sorts of people it is like truly comes across in the work that no demon like the demon city of shinjuku just because this horrible earthquake happened and is and the weird crap that's happening there is preventing a regular reconstruction and the and a return to 
the way things were before the earthquake, before the devil quake. There is still a sense of within the work that the that that life, if you'll forgive me, quoting Jurassic Park, finds a way. People still live there. It's still a place to live. It's still popular. A place. If you can avoid to live there, if you don't have to live in Demon City Shinjuku, you don't want to live in Demon City Shinjuku. But if you have, if you're a person who has nowhere else to go, if you're a wanted criminal or someone who is just so destitute that you, there's nowhere else that you can live. Um, if you're any number of varieties, like, um, if you're falsely accused of a crime and on the run, uh, all sorts of other stuff, like basically demons, like the, 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 what happens in the universe is Demon City Shinjuku, the, becomes the place where people with nowhere else to turn goes to, um, goes to live with now whether they have nowhere else to turn because they are desperate and they've been brought fell into the cracks in the system or because they are really nasty nasty dangerous people um like that is variable because all of them are there and so consequently in the setting like you get this sense of like semi-normalcy in the sense of like all there's all sorts of weird crap here. Like you don't go out at night, not because there's some cyborg that's gonna shank you if they if, or blast you with a heat ray if you look at him funny. You don't go out at night because that shank because that cyborg with a like that cyborg with the heat ray and who will shank you to look at it funny knows better than to go out at night. They will stay inside with the lights on and the door barred and back to the wall. Or actually, not even their back of the wall, just right in the mid, sitting square in the middle of the room, um, because there are things out in th that out in the streets at night that will just that that will just take out anybody, like the the toughest, nastiest murder monsters out there, like um, Rome to the gills, um, cyber psychos will just that will just eat them for lunch literally and so by contr and so on the other hand um not only all of these people still have to get along together because for all that they disagree with each other for all that they don't get along with each other um and fight over Earth and all this, that, and the other thing, there's all still all this other nasty stuff going on around them that will go after each other, each of them just as bad. And there's no sense of that at all in the anime. And it feels like a budgetary issue as to why. Because in the book, there's a lot, they, they get this across through a lot of characters. Uh, taxi drivers, bartenders, bar patrons, um, members of street gangs. Um, we see gang fight, like very formalized, structured mm -hmm. gang fights between different Esper gangs fighting over control of a street market. Um, by the way, which is otherwise a bustling street market, which people go to on a regular basis um, with lots of traffic. And none of that is in show in the movie. The movie is just like kind of over 24 to 48 hours. So as far as how this pans out in the book, consequently, is like, I came in the movie going, oh, this is like an urban swords and sorcery thing. It's has the narrative depth of something like Robert E. Howard's um, Jewel of the, Ele of the Elven's Tower. Um, or uh, 
Phoenix on the Sword, like a short story, maybe a moderate novella. This, like, like something where you have the one one-off story and the interesting character content. Um, and you can kind of build off some other stuff if you want to take this from a role-playing standpoint. Here, for the novel, it's like, oh, this is a world that clearly when Kukichi went into this, like, I'm telling a complete story here with interesting characters um, and well-developed environment, but also with well-developed environments where if this book does well, I can come back to this and tell more and more stories here because there's enough painted just around the edges that you can build out in that direction and just keep going. Uh, like, not like Robert E. Howard complexity, where he'll just drop references to picks and um, that sort of, and like drop names here and there and eventually go figures, okay, I'll, I'll may come back to this at some other point. Um, I may go over to this place or that place and tell a story of Conan there. This has the breadth to it of like an almost Tolkien-esque um, narrative complexity of he has of like within the microcosm of of Shinjuku, of this demonically influenced Shinjuku war. He has enough built within it and that implies more by extension of the world around it that you can do a lot more to it. It's kind of a middle ground between Tolkien and Howard. It's comparable to something like the world or other, some other works similar to that, which focus on a metropolitan area with hints of the world outside it coming in from discussion of it in the work, but all the focus ultimately is on this city that is something of a, of a hive. Um, where, like, not quite Discworld, because Discworld, the developments outside of Ankh-Morpork are, by extension, like, they are internally consistent, but also, by extension, based on the concept like based around the joke are built around setting up a satiric, uh, a comedic story or a satirical story or that sort of thing. Um, something like, for example, uh, the Igors or that sort of thing. Like it is like the Igors are built around like the concept of the Igors for Discworld, for example, like Uberval, uh, yeah, uh, Uberwald. I just remember the exact name of the region. Uh, space that for a second. Like the 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 whole thing of Uberwald. Uberwald is the hammer horror pastiche of Discworld, and with all the things that you'd expect to come with it: vampires, werewolves, mad scientists, and with mad scientists you have hunchbacked uh, lab assistants who, um, who are aware of when the lightning is coming and in and. and yank the chains to lift the creation up to the top of the spire so that the lightning can bring the mad scientist creation life. I mean, that's the grand universal horror hammer horror tradition. And certainly, um, and that's how that pastiche works is it builds on that and satirizes it in its own ways. But the, or of when they establish Uber Uberwald as oh, um, this character has ties to Uberwald or that sort of thing is like it is playing off. Of, okay, Uberwald is hammer horror territory. It's universal horror territory. It's hordes of peasants with torches and pitchforks going after the mad scientist and the vampire and their castle on the hill where nobody goes out at night and hangs garlic on their door and. You figured out the, the you, you know the tropes and we'll play with them as as works within the context of Uberworld. Go on, um, like that's that's what this uh, Terry Pratchett does. This one he does it very well. Um, on the other hand, with Kokichi and Demon City Shinjuku, it really fits closer to 
Robert Lynn Aspirin and his collaborators with the Thieves World novel, um, where they have developed the city of Sanctuary and focused on there and the various districts of it as a microcosm with implications around coming in from the, on the world around it going from the development and discussion of, of the city and characters and cultures that interact. And that's works incredibly well with what Kokichi's really well here. And probably like even better than thieves world in that respect, because thieves world has, it, it's a share. It's a, like a seventies, eighties shared universe fantasy, um, more eighties in the sense of you have various authors, all chipping stuff in here and there. Um, all providing their own takes, that sort of thing. It's 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 a thing that somewhat has fallen out of the standard customary or thing with literature with fantasy literature in the West outside of comics and that sort of thing. We have a bunch of different authors contributing to a common universe, usually with an author or two in sort of a editorial role kind of steering the ship. The last like real bastion of that at the moment is actually with um Wild Cards and George R. R. Martin. Um, but yeah, this is uh, Kokichi just doing it on his own, which is makes mm -hmm. this all very impressive. And while lots of like light novel series will do similar sort of sort of things, like early installments, fleshing out some stuff of the world, um, there's often a problem with some of those, even like. Um, even like Log Horizon, which I like a lot, where the first book in the series, um, actual core narrative is somewhat weak, and there's a big chunk of the focus is getting the reader acquainted to the world, often because the protagonists in some form or another are fish out of water, because often these are isekai, a lot of the light novels in question are isekai. Um, and again, this is not the case here. Like we do have characters who are somewhat fish out of water here, um, but not, but they are still able to find their way. They're fish out of water, but they're catfish, or they're or they're out of water, but they're not fish. They're amphibians. That sort of thing. that is the analogy I would make. It's not a great analogy, but it's an analogy. Uh and all makes for a very engrossing story. It's legitimately a case where I came into this expecting popcorn. I expected a light, not, say like, not tonally light, but something like, like at the level of depth to it of something like say, Harry Drake, where there's a little bit to sink my teeth into. But otherwise, like, yeah, it's an urban fan. Like, Harry Dresden, really the early installments, is ultimately, this is an urban fantasy, hard-boiled detective story. We'll stop there. Um, and this has enough stuff to dig your teeth in, or to grab hold of. Like, oh, I get why we got a sequel with Demon Castle Babylon that's attached to it. I get that there's a separate series of novels with a new pro with a new lead character and uh, Doctor Mephisto, um, just spinning off regarding a uh, vampire queen trying to take over uh, the Demon City and all the sorts of stuff. Because there is a ton of material here, and and it but it doesn't let set building that material. Because that's also the problem I had with. Um, with the Legend of Galactic Heroes series, is whenever it came time to do world building expedition, exposition, you could you can just feel just the the, the plot just uh, come jamming to a halt as the author just slams on the brakes and the reader gets lurched forward and like no we're gonna stop now and we're gonna talk about the fall of Earth and Earth's total loss of relevance because it's important later but it's and it's and it's a little relevant now because we're talking about the Church of Terra. 
but this isn't going to pay off until much later, but we're going to just slam on the brakes now, spend about a chapter or a half a chapter, half a chapter full to a full chapter, laying all this out. And then we'll get, then, then once we've done that, we'll just pop it back into here. Pop, it, pop us back into first after we were going not a nice clip in fourth gear later and start building the plot uh, momentum back up again. None of that here. It is, it is in short, like I've read several of the Vampire Hunter D novels. I have not had a chance to read the Wicked City novel yet. Um, I read, but comparing this to Vampire Hunter D, I like Vampire Hunter D, but I like, I enjoy Vampire Hunter D a lot, but I liked Demon City Shinjuku so much more. And it's almost a disappointment that Demon City Shinjuku, frankly, has kind of fallen by the wayside. I mean, I understand why. He is also, the Hunter D novel is also a great story and an interestingly done world. And it, like, when you have Yoshitaka Amano as your artist for your books, that kind of just grabs all your attention in. And perhaps it is the greatest weakness of Demon City Shinjuku as a series is, or as, as a novel, is there isn't an artist with a visual presence to him attached, like, like a mono um, that's attached to the work. And having somebody like a mono, like, if, this book had come out with illustrations by Yoshiaki Kawajiri, who also has a very, very strong visual flair. Oftentimes, he's also adapting other people's art styles. He's adapting uh, Clamp or Amano's himself's art style. Um, that would have a certain, like, that would give a real st strong visual sense to it. And come across, there is art in here, there is internal art. Um, on the cover and within the book itself of significant sequences, but having somebody like having an artist with a style that fits with this, who just grabs you by the eyeballs, so to speak, and look at this that Amano does, I think would have helped give it more, t give the work a bit more legs. I mean, also Amano has the association with Final Fantasy in the West. Like that's most people's introduction to Amano as an artist, so that that also kind of helps as well with Vampire, with why Vampire Hunter D has had so much more legs to it than um, than Demon City Shinjuku does. Again, I don't know. Otherwise, ah, uh, oh yeah, I fully recommend picking up uh, vamp the Vampire Hunter D novel and Demon. Regularly, the, the omnibus with Demon Palace Bab Babylon, which is currently the one that's available. I will give my thoughts on Demon Palace Babylon once I have finished that novel, and we'll see how that one holds up in comparison to the first book. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 